All right, we bring in GOP financier Dan Palmer from the great state of California. Oh, Dan, because the first time the president uh, threatened to shut down the border, that worked out so well for him. Smart to go back to the well for a second time? You know, uh, either side of the aisle you're on, you can't look at the border and say, gee, we've got control of it. I mean, this week, Jay Johnson, who used to work for uh, for Obama as uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, said, look, any day that we're over 1,000 people crossing, we're overwhelmed. And they had a day this week at 4,000 people crossing. The president's positioned correctly here that the border is a national security issue with a humanitarian uh, element. Uh, something's got to be done. You can't keep going at oh, this okay, rate but, but and you, leave you just it made the uh, point. as is. Didn't you just make the point, though? What? How do you you shut down the border. Conceivably, illegal immigration should already be shut down right now. That's why there's troops on the border. That's why we're spending billions of dollars a year to do it. If you shut down the legal border crossings, isn't, isn't that just hurting the very people who are trying to either get back and forth for trade legally, people, very people who are trying to come across legally, American citizens inside Mexico? Why does the president insist on giving this argument away a to Democrats when you offer something that seems on its face so contrary to American interests? Same reason you caution the reporters who report into you from the border, hey, be careful, it's dangerous. Talk about vibrancy of trade, you know, the way Senator Udall is talking about it. It's, it's vibrancy of trade for cartels. You know, the problem is oh, this Dan, border Dan, is Dan, out reasonable, of control. Dan, reasonable people can agree that if you <laughs> shut down all trade across the southern United States border, the economy in your state would go into a spiral in a matter of hours. Oh, that's not true at all, Leland. You know, if if something's unscheduled, it certainly has greater impact. Something that's, uh, you know, spontaneous um, is is very difficult. But if people understand that the border is going to have a different set of rules and a different regime, uh, people will plan for it. The uh, the situation on the border is an intolerable one. Uh, our de Democrats are going to argue that the president can't do this, but somebody has to do something. It's a complete abdication on the part of Congress, and they're a failure. Uh, but has how left does no how option. does shutting? But how does shutting down legal trade uh, through ports of entry, how does shutting that down by closing the U.S. border, how does that somehow, A, make things safer, or B, stop people from crossing illegally that the president says is an emergency? Closing the border is going to have multiple effects. Trade is one effect. The other effect is the 4,000 or so people who tried to cross into the United States in order to seek asylum are going to, ha are going to be held prior to entering the country. So this is going to have multiple effects for different constituencies. The most important constituency here is not the people trying to enter the country. The most important constituency are American citizens who are adversely affected by the absence of control at the border. And that's what the president's working very hard to try to establish. That, that's got to be the paramount consideration. All right, m move on to the economy. You and I have talked about this before, of, the, uh, of a President Trump running in 2020 on the economy. Here is Larry Kudlow from the administration talking about interest rates and what they want to have happen going into 2019. Take a listen. And in the absence of inflation, with some of these global threats, um, our view is um, at some point, I don't know about the immediately, that may be a misquote, but at some point, um, I wouldn't mind seeing the Fed drop their target rate. All right, they've been talking about a half a point as growth seems to be slowing. Uh, in layman's terms, a half a point interest rate drop is a little bit like giving a seven-year-old three Cokes in terms of what it does to the economy. Uh, is this tacit admission by the administration that going into 2019 there's reasons to worry about the economy? Look, this is a bargaining position. They're talking up a 50-point change. If they get a 25-point change, it's a win. The Trump economy is based on growth. He wants both feet on the accelerator because that's what benefits regular, everyday working Joes. Wages rise when growth is, is at a faster clip. Now, obviously, uh, there's a, a worry about inflation, and so you have to uh, you know, temper that with some rate increases now and again. But uh, Jerome Powell came to the microphone this last week and said, we see a different climate now in the first quarter than we did in the fourth quarter. And he's admitting the risks of uh, the headwinds of, of trade and, and the recession, uh, de facto recession in Europe. These are all factors that are slowing the global environment mm. and affecting the United States economy. So uh. the, the markets react on sentiment, and the sentiment is based on the direction. And if the direction has been upward, sentiment is more risk off. The president wants risk on. So signaling a rate cut is more appropriate, whether it's mm. 50 basis points 
or 25 basis points is the right signal. We want risk on. We want a growing economy that grows wages. The wages are the most important thing going yeah. on here. We need everyday people to be right. making more money for the hard work they do. Well, cer 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 certainly for the president's reelection, uh, wages going up would be a helpful thing. Dan Palmer in California. Dan, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Leland. Uh, Thank right. you.